Good morning. morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship this morning, this first Sunday of Lent. Uh, it's uh, good to have you uh, with us here today for our worship service. For those who are, are uh, listening and, and, and watching at home, um, we're getting a little a bit of a late start. We have some technical problems back there. Technology does that sometimes, but we'll, uh, we're getting started now. Today, with the first Sunday in Lent, with the change of season, there are some things that changes. The worship setting that we're using switches over to setting three um, from our, the old hymnal, and it's in our, our current hymnal, that we know that setting well. There's also some things that we do um, at the time of the Lord's Prayer and the benediction that are, are a little different during this season as well. In addition, this Sunday is one of the services of healing that we do over the course of the year. We are in need of healing in a lot of ways, not just physically, but also spiritually, emotionally, praying for the healing of the nations, praying for the healing of our families and our, and our friendships. Um, if you, you don't have to look really, really hard to find some aspect of our lives uh, for all of us that is in need of some form of healing. So we're doing that as part of our worship today. And we'll start with a word of welcome about that. Next slide. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to hear the word of God, pray for those in need, and ask God's blessing on those who seek healing and wholeness through Christ our Lord. The order for healing is an expression in worship of the church's ministry of healing. Here, all who sense the need for God's healing in any aspect of their lives may join in prayer for others and themselves. Here, each person may come to receive a word of blessing and prayer. Here, each one may also receive a physical gesture of healing, the laying on of hands, which may be accompanied by anointing with oil. These signs, first given in baptism, tell us again that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked forever with the cross of Christ, who is health and salvation for the world. In its ministry of healing, the church does not replace the gifts of God that come through the scientific community, nor does it promise a cure. Rather, the church offers and celebrates gifts such as these, God's presence with strength and comfort in times of suffering, God's promise of wholeness and peace, and God's love embodied in the community of faith. Please stand now as you're able. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. With humility, we confess our sins before God and one another. God of mercy, we come before you just as we are, pretending nothing, hiding nothing. You know the deepest working is of our hearts and minds, and that we have failed to be your faithful servants and witnesses. We implore you to deliver us from the death we have secured for ourselves. Hear us, gracious Lord. Amen. God hears us always and knows what we need even when we do not. Receive assurance of the Lord's absolution and put your trust in the new covenant promised and guaranteed to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our opening hymn is, I heard the voice of Jesus say,
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Great God, our healer, by your power, our Lord Jesus healed the sick and gave hope to the hopeless. As we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Please be seated. of our council. That's right. And then uh, council members who are here come forward. There are two of them. A couple of them are back in the fellowship hall, it looks like. We did this later, later in the service at the, at the first service, so they were thinking that they were free. But... Uh, I thought I would get them um, covered early in the service today. Here they are. So these four persons, actually, you know, obviously, many of our council couldn't be here uh, this morning but we're doing the installation in their absence. These persons have been elected to positions of leadership. We give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead us in our common life, in our mutual mission as a congregation. You've been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one together with the whole church. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support, so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation, in the wider church, in this community, and in the world. 
You are to be faithful in your specific areas of serving, that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. I will, and I ask God to help me. And people of God, I ask you, will you support these your elected leaders, and will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all, who are baptized? If so, answer, we will and we ask God to help us. We will and we ask God to help us. I now declare you installed as council members of this congregation. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace, that you may be faithful servants of Christ. Amen. Let's give them a hand for their service. Thank you. Right. And you may be seated. from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 1 to 11, a reading about the text. The annual harvest festival called the Festival of Weeks provides the same for this reading. The festival celebrates the first fruits of the produce of the land offered back to God in thanks. In this text, worshipers announce God's gracious acts on behalf of Israel. The reading is from chapter 1, starting, When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, go to the place that the Lord your God will choose a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at the time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by opposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors, the Lord our voice, the Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power and with signs and honors. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it before, down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens have, who reside with, among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to read from Psalm 91, verse 1 and 2, and 9 to 16. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the, of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, and my trust. Because you have made the Lord 
your refuge and the most high your dwelling place. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent who will trample underfoot. For those who, I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. The epistle is from Romans 10, verse 8b to 14. A word about the text. Paul reminds the Christians at Rome of the foundation of their creed, the confession of faith in the risen Christ as Lord. The reading goes as this. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able as we sing our gospel acclamation. This is a hymn from the old uh, blue hymnal, Stay Here. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. A word about this text. After being filled with the Holy Spirit at his baptism, Jesus is led in the wilderness. Through his responses to the temptations of the devil, he defines what it means to be called Son of God. Our reading. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test. He departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and it is time for children. 
Do any kids want to come forward for the children's message today? It looks like none, none do. The heart of the children's message today is about the, the, what we're going to be doing later on, the, uh, the service of healing. You know, we are all in need of healing in some way. Sometimes we're sad, sometimes we're hurt, sometimes we're angry. And what we're going to be doing at the service of healing is something that you don't see that often. It's called a, it's called a laying on of hands. We put our hands on a person's head. And, um, well, that, that feels kind of weird. It looks kind of weird. But that's what Jesus did. And when, when we put our hands on somebody, we're asking for God's spirit to go into that person and make them feel better. And when you think about it, it makes sense. Because, well, look, what do your parents do when you're, when you're sad or when you're hurt? They put their arms around you. They put their hands on the spot that hurts. Touch is a holy thing. And so that's what the service of healing that we're going to do later in the service is all about. And I'll give you instructions about uh, how to do that later on in the service. So let's go to the message. And the next slide, please. There we go. I read a story about a little boy named Bobby who many, many years ago desperately wanted a new bicycle. His plan was to save his nickels, dimes, and quarters until he finally got enough to buy it. And I did say this was a long time ago. Each night he asked God to help him save his money. Kneeling beside his bed, he prayed, Dear God, please help me save my money for a new bike. And please, Lord, don't let the ice cream man come down the street again tomorrow. Reader's Digest told about someone else who faced temptation. You, you may have heard this story before. An overweight businessman decided it was time to shed some excess pounds. He took his new, new diet seriously, even changing his driving route to avoid his favorite, favorite bakery. One morning, however, he showed up at work with a gigantic coffee cake. Everyone in the office scolded him, but he, his smile remained. No, this is a special coffee cake, he explained. I accidentally drove by the bakery this morning, and there in the window was a host of goodies. I felt it must be a sign. So I prayed, Lord, if you want me to have one of those delicious coffee cakes, let there be a parking spot open right in front. And sure enough, on the eighth time around the block, there it was. But joking aside, temptation is in the news a lot. Politicians keep getting into trouble for using campaign contributions for personal spending sprees. Celebrities and athletes keep falling into affairs and addictions. It happens in the church, too. Not long ago, there was a headline that someone had taken over a million dollars from one of those mega churches. A few years back, down in the Minneapolis area synod, in the ELCA, a member of the synod staff, someone the bishop hired, had embezzled $100,000 from the synod budget between 2005 and 2012. Now those are extreme examples, but all of us know what it is to get lost. Lost in the wilderness of temptation. Temptation is part of the human condition. That's why Jesus is led into the wilderness in our gospel today. In order to redeem us, to save us, he had to experience everything we do, including temptation. As the old theological arguments say, what is not assumed cannot be redeemed. So Jesus had to be completely human. As it says in Hebrews 4, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Now you could argue that this whole story doesn't look like the temptation we know. 
We don't have conversations with a visible devil. We aren't transported from place to place as Jesus is in the story. And the temptations that Jesus faces are particular to him. The average person isn't tempted to turn stones into bread, to worship Satan, or to put God to the test by leaping from a cliff. Those temptations are pretty far from the kinds we face day to day. So some might say, what about the temptations that are faced daily by the recovering alcoholic and the substance abuser, the lonely divorcee, the struggling business owner, the teenager who covets peer acceptance more than anything. What, Je- what does Jesus know about those kinds of temptations? But there is a common denominator here, a common thread between our temptations and the tests that Jesus faced. We all know that, that expression, let it go and give it to God. Well, temptation is the opposite of that. Hold on to it and do it yourself. Or even worse, give it up and give it to someone else or something else. We may not be tempted to turn stones into bread, but we are constantly tempted to do things ourselves, to do it our way, as if we don't need God. And worshiping the devil is no more a temptation for us than it was for Jesus, but compromising our values with the ways of the world is very seductive. None of us is likely to put God to the test by leaping from a cliff, but we do test God. We say, God, if you really exist, then get me out of this. God, if you really love me, then do this for me. We turn the promises of God around and try to manipulate God. At every baptism in the Lutheran church, an old question is asked. A question used at countless baptisms all over the world. A question that's almost as old as the church itself. Just before water is splashed in the threefold name of God, I look at the parents and the sponsors and and sometimes an adult candidate across the water and ask, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? The old hymnal asked it more simply. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? And to tell you the truth, I've been waiting for somebody to laugh at that question. A lot of people don't believe in the devil anymore. They have left him behind with their imaginary friend and the monster under the bed, relegating evil to more manageable and explainable psychoses that could be named and cataloged and treated with a little pharmaceutical help. One seminary student approached his systematics professor and asked, do I really have to say that line about the devil and all his empty promises? And he'll never forget what his professor said. He smiled at his student knowingly and said, spend 20 years in parish ministry and come back and ask me that question again. Oh, Satan is real. And he is powerful. But just a side note here, Satan is not the Lord of this world as he claims to be. He doesn't have the power to make you do anything. That's just another one of his lies. He's called the devil for a reason. Devil means slanderer. He's the father of lies and he will say anything to talk you into sin. To get you to choose to stray from the path. But he can't make you do anything. So do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? I renounce them, we would say. Shortly after the Reformation, some young followers of Martin Luther wrote him with a question. They asked, we are 
harassed by many temptations which appeal to us so often and so strongly that they give us no rest. You don't seem to be troubled in this way. And we'd like to know your secret. Don't temptations bother you? Are you somehow immune to sin? And Luther wrote them back. I too know something of temptation. But the difference is that when someone, when temptation comes knocking at the door of my heart, I always answer, go away. This place is occupied. Go back where you came from, for Christ is here. It reminds me of an old expression. When a young woman had given her heart to a young man who was away, even if they weren't married yet, if she was asked out by someone else, she would say, I'm spoken for. I like that. It meant that she knew who she was and to whom her heart belonged. I'm spoken for. Of course, that doesn't mean that the antidote to temptation is just to be so focused on Christ that there's no room for temptation. Like if you're holy enough, temptation won't be an issue. Don't forget, even Jesus was tempted. To rely on your ability to focus, even to focus on Jesus, is simply relying on yourself again and your own strength. Jesus didn't rely on his own strength. He rested in the power of the Holy Spirit. He took hold of Scripture and responded again and again that only God is God. So resisting temptation isn't something that we can do by ourselves. We need help. We need Jesus. Only God is God, and he's walked in that wilderness already. He knows how powerful temptation is. He knows how easy it is to get lost. We don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, that scripture said. We have one who in every respect has been tested as we are. Jesus went to the wilderness so that he could walk beside us and lead us out of that wilderness. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? When we say, I renounce them, we're saying, I give my heart to the Father. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? When we say, I renounce them, we're saying, I give my heart to the Son. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you away from God? And when we say, I renounce them, we're saying, I give my heart to the Holy Spirit. We say, my heart is spoken for. Because only in the Lord do we stand a chance. Amen. Please stand now as you're able and let us sing. There's a balm in Gilead.
to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal a sin-sang soul. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We open our hearts to God in prayer. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Loving God, our source and our final home, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth, for our human bodies and all you have, you have created in your great mercy. Yeah. Mer Merciful God, by the wounds of your son, we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people in your great mercy. Hear us, O God. Holy God, your spirit came upon us in the waters of baptism and brought us into the communion of saints. Renew us in, the, in us the grace of baptism by which we share in Christ's death and resurrection in your great mercy. Mighty God, your Son Jesus brought healing and wholeness to all. Bring your healing presence now to all who seek, who are sick or in pain. Great hope to all who are discouraged or in despair. In your great mercy. Yes. Gentle God, your Son called little children to himself. Help all children who are sick or disabled. Take them in your loving arms and nourish them with your grace in your great mercy. Compassionate God, the strength of those who suffer, bring hope and peace to all who are in mental, physical, or spiritual distress in your great mercy. Almighty God, source of human knowledge, give skill and wisdom and passion to all who provide medical care in your great mercy. Yes. Loving God, our creator and redeemer, give gentleness and courage to all family members, friends and caregivers of those who suffer in your great mercy. Yes. Eternal God, we thank you for all the faithful departed. Heal the pain of all who grieve in your great mercy. God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence, sustain all who pray, who we pray. Drive away their suffering, give them firm help and strength, their trust in you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share God's peace with one another. You may be seated. So I'm almost for mission to share with you. We always begin with a, a word of thanks 
Today we're going to say a big thank you to Marwayne Aber for sponsoring the month of March for our radio ministry. Such an, an important ministry that we're going out every week. And also a big thank you to Paul and Carolyn Martinson for sponsoring this week of our Kua mission in memory of Sally Hansen. Big thank you to them. Uh, I thank you in advance. The, the month of, of March is Food Share Month. And um, so a change in our extra mile giving for, for this month. Every, every dollar that we give to the food shelf is, is doubled and it's matched uh, during this month. So it's, you imagine it's an important month in the um, uh, fundraising of the food shelf for the whole year. So if you have any, any extra that you can give, please give to the food shelf this month. Our next slide. Things to uh, be aware of that are coming up here. Next slide. On um, Wednesday nights now in Lent, we're having our, our Lenten services. They'll start at, at um, 5.50. That's right, 5.50. And um, you are encouraged to, to come for the meal and then the Lenten service. You see we are set up for our, our Lenten services. I hope you'll consider coming to those. If you've been to any, any of them before, you know that when we do hold an evening prayer and when we use these prayer stations as part of that service, it is uh, a wonderful a wonderful thing. Uh, the other pastors, we're, we're, every year we do a round robin with the other area pastors. And they are uh, amazed by how well we do our Wednesdays here. So I hope you will come out for that. The meal that, that happens beforehand, a soup and sandwich during Lent, um, we have a need for dessert makers and bakers for those meals. And there's a sign-up sheet out there in the narthex someplace if you can help out with that. Our next slide. And the prayer concerns. I, now we didn't have any in particular new ones that, that came out this week, but in your bulletin there's a whole page of prayer requests there. Please continue to pray for all those in need. And our God sightings. One I want to highlight for you for the God sightings. Um, Hannah Jones, one of our ninth graders, was uh, named to the, to the Class A All-State Jazz Dance Team. And so that's a, that's a big deal as a ninth grader. So if you see Hannah, you can congratulate her. Are there any other God sightings that you would like to share today? Yes, right there. Uh, in the first service, someone mentioned that uh, it's a real blessing that all countries, so many, many countries in the world have come together to support um, what's going on in Ukraine, and we're very grateful for, for common, common caring. Mm -hmm. If you, if you couldn't hear, hear that, someone from the first service had, had, had mentioned this. It is a, it's an amazing thing that all the nations of the world, it seems, are united in uh, supporting Ukraine. Um, that's, a, that's a unique and rare thing that the world is, is rising up in support of, of one nation like that. And so there's a, a small blessing there. We'll continue now with our offering. So as the offering plates are, are received or are passed around now, we'll sing our offering hymn, Healer of Our Every Ill.
Please stand as you are able. Please join me for the offering prayer. Oh God, you commanded, commanded your, people your people to bring the first fruit of their fruits to you, not, not just the unwanted, unwanted leftovers. Give, give us the generous, generous and compassionate hearts you desire in your children, children that the, the disadvantaged among us might know your love through us. us. In Jesus' in name, name, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray as we sing, sing this version of the Lord's Prayer. enough there is wine enough for all O god at your bountiful table join us together with friend and family familiar and alien wealthy and wanting for we are all your children beloved and blessed by you come along to the feast brothers and sisters you may be seated as part of our communion today receive this invitation the ministry of jesus invites us to new life in god and with each other. In the laying on of hands, we proclaim the good news that God desires us to be healthy and one in the body of Christ. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. So the reception of communion today will include the laying on of hands, if you wish. So because our, our tables for, for the, the healing are in the, are in the back, uh, today, one day only, we're going to be coming up the center aisle, returning to our seats on the sides. And um, so when you come forward, you'll receive an individual piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer if you request that. And children, not yet communing, they are included, they are welcome to receive a blessing and a goldfish cracker. And um, you'll also receive an individual piece of 
uh, a cup of wine or white grape juice if you request that. And then as you return to your seats up the sides today, you, you put your cups into the baskets. And uh, if you wish, you can go to the healing stations in the back on both sides and receive a sign of healing. Come and be fed.
please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, through the laying on of hands, grant comfort and suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to us, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense. And help us to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God of mercy, as your people of Israel journeyed through the wilderness to the promised land, bless those who leave this assembly to share the bread of life and cup of salvation with our sisters and brothers who are sick, homebound, or imprisoned. May their communion in the body and blood of Christ nourish their faith and sustain them until the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the God of all consolation bless you in every way, grant you hope all the days of your life, restore you to health and grant you salvation, fill your heart with peace and lead you to eternal life. Amen. During the season of Lent, our benediction will come from the, the final blessing that we use on Wednesday as part of Holden Evening Prayer. And we'll sing this together. Let us bless our God. Praise and thanks to you. Sing together now. May God, Creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Our mission statement. As followers of Christ, with God's love, we embrace one another, our neighbors, and all creation. The closing song today is, O Christ, Your Heart, Compassionate.
go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God.